morning, good afternoon. Thank you. I see people entering the room here. Thanks for joining us. We've got a, a good event today planned. So um, hi in Cincinnati. Thank you for saying good morning. Hi in Colorado. Hello, hello. Hi in San Francisco Bay. Awesome. It's good to have you with us. Hello, John in Whittier. Good morning. Um, I'm here in Northern California, beautiful sunny day, blue skies, no smoke, no clouds, it rained all night. Um, hi, Becca, thanks about, about the ocean. Um, and hi in Seattle, <laughs> sorry it's raining for you unless you love it. Hi in Jersey Shore, um, hello, hello. It's good to have you on today's call, hi, John. All right, well, um, we're gonna get started here in just a few minutes. And um, if you don't know me, my name is Sonia Moline, and I am the Vice President at Technology Source, uh, coming at you live um, from Northern California, as usual. And you can see the, the river right here in the background, um, loving it here. And then Jeff, you're in Fiji, is that correct? <laughs> Do a little remote work from the island of Fiji. Yep, you can see it, see it in the background, right? There. Yep. <laughs> Awesome. Well, glad you could join us. That must be a nice uh, place. Um, never been there yet. It's on the it's on the list, on the bucket list. So, um, well, I, I also want to take a quick minute before we introduce uh, our special guest speaker today uh, to mention we do have a giveaway, and a giveaway is a shaker set, and it's a kind of custom branded set from Uma. We also have one other thing, right? What's that one? The shaker set, and I think what we're doing, and I apologize for maybe not having the details because we didn't quite finalize, but I think it is a box of Uma little uh, tchotchkes and gifts. I think. A tchotchke set. Okay. Well, go. we know a lot of us haven't been able to get out to the um, technology uh, conferences, and so you may be really, you know, in need of some of these tchotchkes that you used to get. So. Um, you know, whether you get the shaker set or the tchotchke set, I, I hope you all have good luck. Um, the way to win is ask great questions. If we use them in today's virtual event, uh, you will get entered into a drawing and at the end we'll do the drawing just like every time. So I see about 90% of you are returning guests and I see a lot of new, new time or first time guests. So thank you as well for joining. Um, and also we have you on mute uh, to keep out the sounds of barking dogs and stuff like that. But please go ahead and chime in if you have questions or comments in the questions section, I will be watching those. So appreciate those. They help us uh, feel like we're connected to you during this uh, time of distancing. So, um, all right, well, I will go ahead and introduce Jeff. Uh, he grew up in Chicago and migrated to the West to get out of the cold weather. Uh, he's an Arizona State alum and has lived in SoCal for 20 years and loves the lifestyle. I don't blame you. I just moved from there. Um, he has many years of experience with voice and data and has been instrumental in building programs to work with customers of all shapes and sizes. He prides himself on being ultra responsive and providing a high level of customer service. Um, two things that we have seen, uh, you know, in all of our interactions with you and Uma, uh, Jeff. So welcome today. Welcome back, I should say. Thank you, Sonia. Always great to be back. And uh, first off, let me say, by the way, I wish I was in Fiji, but I'm actually not in Fiji. That's, I found a nice virtual background. I'm based out of Southern California. I'm in Orange County. Uh, Sonia, probably about 10 or 15 minutes from your, your Tuscan office. So um, if, if anybody is on, I know I've worked with John. I saw you join in. If anybody needs face-to-face -face meetings or anything from me, I am local Southern California, happy to uh, do whatever I can to help. Great. Well, and I know we have um, guests and uh, you know partners and agents and their customers are all on today from all over the place. So um, I know you also work in other places. So it's good to have you here and to be able to have that national footprint. It's great. And we know that, that Uma does that. So, um, <clears throat> so well, without further ado, I'd like to kick it off. And um, let me start with, with this. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the hospitality industry, and um, it's an industry 
near and dear to my heart. Um, my husband and I are dabbling in this industry ourselves, um, becoming hoteliers and um, enjoying all the challenges that come with that. Um, and one of those has been for sure communications. Um, I can tell you we'll have people call the front desk at the hotel and ask the same questions over and over again. Um, you know, and also you miss a call, that guest is probably gonna book at another hotel. Um, so how, are, how is UMA helping um, organizations in the hospitality industry right now um, going through those repetitive questions and making sure that those, those calls get answered and responded to so that, um, you know, restaurants and hotels and, and those and those types of fast, quick paced industries are able to, you know, see the benefit of UMA. Yeah, great thing. And I'll talk more about this in detail when I get into the presentation. But hospitality for us is a real growing niche. We've found a lot of success working with not only hotels, but B2Bs and assisted care facilities and all types of different hospitality type venues. And really, it's so funny because every opportunity I look at is completely different. And with our solution, we have the ability to craft really unique and different configurations so that we can meet the customer needs and do a lot of different things. I've worked with some hotels that have 15 year old phone systems and sometimes they wanna rip out the whole phone system. Sometimes they wanna incorporate some new technology with old technology. So we can do a myriad of different things. We're typically very cost competitive, but we will provide the flexibility and support that most customers need. So that's kind of key differentiators in that space, but it's a growth, growth market for us for sure. Great. Well, let's hear more about UMA. Um, we haven't spoken, you know, with our advisors and, and their customers in, you know, several months. And so I'd like to kind of get an update on how things are going for you guys. And, um, you know, some of these people have never heard of UMA. I, I kind of doubt that. I was joking. Um, even my 84-year-old mother-in-law is aware of UMA. So your brand is strong. <laughs> the force is strong with UMA. Um, I think everyone's heard of UMA at this point. And so now it's just looking at, um, besides the, uh, I guess you'd say residential use cases, um, how you've transitioned very well, I might add, into helping uh, more enterprise and small business and mid-sized customers. Yeah, so I can answer that question directly. I'm definitely gonna talk about a lot of that in the presentation. So. Do you want me to go into the presentation? Do you want me to just maybe address the question? Totally up to you, Sonia. Yeah, well, let's let's see the presentation. I'm excited and um, you know, the audience will be able to ask questions. And so we'll just keep this kind of an open forum as, as we go. G great, fantastic. And you know, you mentioned it's, it's funny. I do run across quite a few people that know of UMA, know of UMA brand, but typically most people that I run across, especially, you know, new, new customers for us haven't heard of UMA. So, let me do this then. I am going to share my screen. And all right, let me make sure, Sonia, maybe you can confirm. You can see the UMA? Yep. <laughs> I was going to say loud and clear, but that's not how I see. Clear. <laughs> Let's just go for that one. Clear is great. I like clear. Clear as day. Yeah, especially with internet challenges these days. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this presentation. Um, I believe we'll, I don't know if we'll, we'll take questions whenever they arise. You can put questions in chat. Maybe Sonia can reach out and interrupt me and I can answer them, but, and I'm happy to take questions after. So again, any questions, please let us know. And certainly I can make this presentation available. If you wanna see this afterwards, I'm happy to do that also. So let me kind of go through. Here's the agenda, pretty straightforward. I'll talk about UMA. I'll talk about our product and a couple of different solution sectors we'll, we'll, we'll talk about. And then we're doing a, a promotion, uh, not only that uh, martini shaker set, but we're doing a promotion for, for all our new customers. So I'll talk about that. All right, so who is UMA? Again, I run across a lot of people that don't know us. We've been around since 2004. So we are a 17 year old company. We've been doing the same voice or VoIP voiceover uh, internet solutions for the past 17 years. So. We're very good at doing voice over IP. We've learned a lot in 17 years, and we will continue to be around for many more years based on our success and the growth we're experiencing now. So just kind of make that point to let people know we've been around a long time. One of the other things I highlight when I talk about UMA is the fact that we did an IPO in 2015, so we're a public company now. 
And typically you might find that public companies tend to have a higher standard they need to report to and the shareholders, et cetera. So we're a profitable company, we're a public company, we've been around a long time. And like I said, we plan on continuing to do uh, the, the voice and voice over IP for many more years. So you can see we have a lot of users on our platforms and kind of Sonia, you mentioned this a little bit, but one area that we're seeing a lot of growth in is the business space. We do have a residential product that UMA offers if somebody needs voice service for their home, but where we've seen most of the growth, even greater than 50% is in the business space, which is where we'll talk about today. And then we have about 900 plus employees. When we say team members, we have a lot of contractors and things with offices in, I think we're about five to six countries now. So international, if you will, and growing. So what differentiates UMA a little bit? Why, why does UMA win in this voice space or this voice over IP space? And one of the themes you'll hear from me is this adaptability or flexibility. We have, and I even mentioned this a little bit earlier, a tremendous amount of flexibility in the solutions we can create from our customers. If somebody came to me and said, I need one phone line for my pizza restaurant, perfect, I'll take it. Great solution, we can do it very quickly and simply. Or if we get a thousand plus uh, user, let's say hotel chain and or any other kind of company with multiple locations, locations internationally, they have existing technology they wanna mix with new technology, we can do that too. And we can bring everything under our umbrella. So there's one bill and we'll be the responsible party for everything that we kind of incorporate into that solution. Customization fits right in with that. Again, we are tailoring pretty much each of our solutions to what the customer needs exactly. We're also a pretty good value play out there. Um, UMA is maybe not the cheapest provider out there in the space, but we typically win with our flexibility and the support that we provide before, during, and after the sale. So value is definitely a high point. Again, probably not the, the cheapest out there. And I'll talk a little bit more about, but I kind of think of quality and reliability and security all in one bucket. And we have uh, what we call a five nines of reliability, which means that we have a money back to guarantee that our service will be up 99.999% of the time when our customers are using our service. So the reliability falls same in with the, with the quality based on where we've designed our backend network. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And I'll also talk a little bit more about the personalized service. But the reason that we've seen so much growth, especially in the business place, kind of falls around these five areas, right? I mean, obviously we have good products too, but on top of that, these five things typically uh, tend, tend to help us differentiate. You'll see some names on here that you may or may not know, right? So again, like I said, if it's a, a, a three-person uh, healthcare facility and they need voice, that's fantastic. Or if you're a big Wendy's franchise, or if you're Slack, you know, the Slack um, communications provider, we'll work with you, right? So these are just some of our customers these are some big customers, some small customers. Sometimes I have the ability to use these as case studies and references. It just depends on what your individual needs might be. All right. And Sonia mentioned this a little bit, but, and, and I've even kind of touched on this also. We do have a couple different solutions that we can provide depending on the size of your business and the needs of your business, right? We can do very small, we can do the medium and we can do the very large. We have a 10,000 plus user company right now that's on a major European expansion. So we're working with them right now. So yes, we can provide international. If you have locations international, we can do that also. So again, I typically see the small customers are mostly more simple needs and the large customers have very complex needs and we can meet a lot of different things, again, based on our flexibility, adaptability, all right? We're gonna probably focus most of our area in these two spaces for today. But again, if you know of or come across or are a smaller business, very happy to talk with you, all right? One thing I always put up when I talk to customers and when I'm talking to my, my partners and resellers, 
I always make sure to put this slide up to let them know that, again, we've been around a long time. We really kind of honed our technology to be a very easy to use, very simple to use, very simple to implement. And we won an award from PC Magazine for the last eight years as far as the overall satisfaction from our existing customers, All right? So independent survey, we do not pay for this. And this is how the customers have rated us against you know, some pretty big brand names out there in this space. All right, so we're very happy about this. All right, I'm going to switch from talking about UMA and then talk about the product. The product that I'll spend the majority of the time talking about here is our UMA Enterprise product. And again, it's not specifically meant necessarily for an, an, a big enterprise company. It's just the name of our product that tends to be for customers that need more sophisticated, more complex solutions, all right? So again, product name called UMA Enterprise, all right? And here's kind of how we, I guess you could say differentiate or focus this solution, right? And again, you're gonna hear some consistent themes from me, right? Because that's kind of what helps differentiate UMA from, from our competitors. But the voice quality, this is absolutely a huge part of our business. We've been doing this for 17 years. So we've developed the technology that works consistently and provides a very high level of quality and reliability for our customers, right? This is built into our entire backend infrastructure. Again, you'll hear this again, tailored you know, customization, right? So we're not cookie cuttering a solution that's just gonna go, here, you get this, you get the same thing, you get the same thing. Typically, every customer I deal with is different and we will make sure we provide the right solution for you. And based on the, the knowledge that we have, I am happy to bring in whatever resources we need into our conversation. So if we come into a very complex configuration, I have sales engineers, I have product developers, and I have other engineers that we can pull into all of these conversations to make sure that we are providing the exact solution to meet your needs, right? Ease of use is built into pretty much everything we do, whether it's the person making and taking calls or whether it's the administrator administering the UMA Enterprise solution for your company. Again, we, we are very proud of the ability to, to make our system easy to use and simple to use, quick on the training piece so you don't need a, a lot of in-depth training. It's usually very simple. Right. And again, the reliability, again, the reliability, quality, I kind of relate these two the same. All right. So again, consistent themes you'll hear from me, but again, helps differentiate UMA because we've had so much success focusing on these areas. All right. I put this slide up and no, I'm not going to certainly go over each one of these individual things, but we have, um, and this is obviously not all of the features built into our UMA Enterprise product, but these are just some of the things that we bring to the table for our customers, right? If let's say a customer just wants to be able to use their computer to make and take calls with a headset, like I've got my little earbud in, if that's what they wanna do, great. Then they can set up a solution with our desktop application and they'll use their computer to make and take calls. Maybe they wanna use strictly their mobile device, right? So they have their mobile device, they wanna be out and about making and taking calls, we can support that also. So a lot of different pieces here, if they are a call center environment, we can meet that need. If the customer has some specific proprietary applications in their business, and I'll talk a little bit more about this for hotels, but we can integrate existing applications into UMA Enterprise so that the phone system can integrate with those backend applications to make more of a a seamless use case for the end user, all right? And I'll talk more about our, our customer success heroes. The other piece on this slide I wanna mention is we also have the ability based on our, you know, ability to customize, to create, you know, tailored solutions. We can bring circuits and fiber and SD-WAN and managed Wi-Fi and data networking all into one solution for our customers. Okay, so a lot of different things we can do. These are just some of the features that we bring to the table for customers that need more in depth. I am happy to spend more time digging into 
If it's individual features, UMA also can demonstrate this product. So if a customer needs to see it live working, we absolutely will do that. All right. So let me talk a little bit more about some, a couple of specific things that we do, and this is our desktop client. So when I say that, I mean, for, for the end users that might not know, this is an application that will reside on your computer and it gives you the ability to make and take calls from your computer. So there's different feature sets here within this application. Again, this would reside on your computer. Doesn't matter if it's Windows or Mac, we can support both. But you'll be able to see presence, which means you'll be able to see who's on the phone and who's not on the phone. I can click a phone icon and I can just dial that person directly. I can click the chat box here and I can chat with that person individually. I can also obviously make and take calls from this application. I can see my call logs, a lot of different features built right into our desktop client. All right. So again, based on the Macintosh Windows computer you use, download the application and you'll have the ability to make and take calls directly from your computer. Okay. Similar offering, and I've kind of already mentioned this, but for mobile, right, we have some customers that are strictly using inter UMA Enterprise on their mobile device. So they don't need a phone on their desk. They don't need to use their computer. They're out and about so much on their mobile device. They use UMA Enterprise strictly on the mobile. And, and it's the same kind of thing. You'll be able to see the directory of employees, and then you can just click the phone and dial them, click the chat button and set up a chat with them. And you have these features available to you on the application also, right? So you can dial extensions, transfers, conferences, you know, put people on hold, DND, et cetera, All right? And again, keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, if we need to dig into any one of these features or applications separately, we can do that on a separate call whenever it's convenient. One of the other things I like showing, and I'm, I'm just showing you the screenshots because I want you to just get a little bit of a feel for it, but based on the simplicity and the ease of use I talked about earlier, we've designed all our applications to be kind of visual, if you will. So this is what we call the admin portal or the administrators portal. So for our customers, we give them the ability to either manage their phone system themselves if they want, or we're happy to do everything for them. There won't be any additional charges if they ask us to do everything, but if they want to add a user, if they want to add a call flow, if they want to add a new location, either they can do it themselves using this portal or we can do it for them. So really up to the customer how they want to do that. And of course, if they want to DIY, do it themselves type of thing, then yes, we can absolutely train them give them all the training and all the tools, they'll need to be able to do that themselves, right? The point here kind of with this is, it is a visual and um, kind of easy to use interface, if you will. You can just drag things on and off here to create call flows. If I wanted to manage the individual devices on the phone system, I can do that. We can set up different, you know, out of office messages depending on time of day. So really a tremendous amount of features all built into an easy to use interface. Okay, and again, keep in mind, this is what the administrator's portal looks like. All right, so kind of just going through, I talked a little bit about the product, right? I gave you a little bit of feel for kind of what the features are and, and what, what the product looks like. Let's switch a little bit and talk about support. Again, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that differentiates UMA because we've been doing the voice service and VoIP service for so long, we really have a, a pretty keenly honed support team. So let me talk more about that, right? So the personalized service, that's kind of one of the key things for UMA is we have a group of, and we call these customer success heroes, but we have a group of project managers at, at UMA and these, these project managers gives you the ability to manage the product and the project the entire way. So we will work with you from the beginning of the sale, during the sale, and then all the way through the final phase of implementation. 
to make sure that we're addressing all of your needs and all of your requirements 100%, right? And we have this down to a process, it's about a 13 step process, but we will get each one of our customers gets a dedicated project manager or customer success hero to work with them to make sure that we're meeting all their needs, do all the training, do all the setup, and work with that customer kind of a one on one through the entire implementation. All right. It's a pretty big differentiator for us in the fact that I know that some of our competitors out there have kind of moved away from doing some of this personalized service. We've actually increased our staff of project managers over the past six months. So again, you can expect that every time you work with UMA, you will have that dedicated person to work with. All right. And then just talking a little bit more about the customer support, we have 365, 24 seven, right? Coast to coast. Um, if you have international locations, we still are available to support them, all right? Our technical support centers, again, North Car uh, I'm sorry, North America based, right? So Boca, we have one big center in Vancouver, one big center in Newark, Northern California. And we have roughly 250 employees directly doing kind of a support, whether it's a customer service, a project management, or a technical support kind of a role. But we have roughly a third of the company dedicated to su support, right? And this includes all kinds of different support. If you're using and pulling in a lot of different tools and features within the configuration that we've sold you, that will all be managed by UMA and we will be responsible for all those different pieces. All right. And we can also do a full, what we call call center or contact center implementation. And we will also support that full call or contact center. So for instance, just to talk about this briefly, but if we run across a customer, it could be a hospital, it could be any business, but if they have a call center staffed with agents, we can support that kind of configuration uh, we can provide the correct solution, but also provide that backend support for that call center environment. Okay. <clears throat> and then the technical support, I probably won't go into a lot of detail on this, but suffice it to say, we have a customer service team, obviously. We have a dedicated project manager for each customer. But on the back end, we also have dedicated technical support resources available. And we you know, I think most companies do kind of create a tiered model where you get a tier one, tier two, depending on your needs, right? We will work with you initially and bring in whatever dedicated resources we need to make sure we're answering your request, your issue, and that we're doing it in a timely fashion. Okay. A couple of quick questions, if that's yeah. okay, Jeff. Okay, Absolutely. great. Um, all right, this one from Rise H, as in hotel, um, with 2.5 million, I think that was a statistic you gave in the beginning. I can't verify that, but it sounds right. What is your retention rate? Great question. You know, and, and we talk about in the industry, it's called churn or retention rate. I don't have retention rate statistics at the top of my head. Um, I know we're at least industry standard and or lower because I've seen some of these numbers. But if we can get some kind of a contact information from that person, Sonia, be happy to provide yeah. the specific details. I, yeah, I just top of my head. I don't know. Great. Great. Uh, this one's from John B is in Bravo for international service. Does the company need to be headquartered in the United States? Great question, John. Yeah, that could be John, uh, John Bogdanov, I think you pronounced, but anyhow, I, you know, that that's a good question. As far as do they need to be, we have most of our international customers are based in the U S North America, if you will. Let me offline on that one too, John, to make sure I know we can provide DIDs and phone service in international locations, pretty much most countries, but I'm not sure about the headquarter piece because that brings in a whole different kind of uh, scenario. So let me take that one offline too, if you don't mind, Sonia. All right, great. And then um, speaking of international, we have a question from Cal H as in hotel, uh, Cal asks, uh, do you adhere to GDB? I think they mean P 
Uh, GDPR compliance when dealing with international customers. Uh, GDPR meaning uh, general data protection regulations. And I think those are specific to uh, Great Britain. Another good question. I, and, and I'm getting kind of stumped early. What I will say is one of my future slides does have some compliance. Uh, it's actually a bunch of acronyms like HIPAA and some finance um, requirements. Let's look at that. I, don't know if it has the GDP are in there, but let's let's look at that and see. I might have to take that one offline too. All right. Um, and then it, a question that I'd like to ask, and um, it's not because I want to win the shaker, but you know, if I do, that's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, seasonally, you know, here we are. It's almost October, and this is a busy season for certain industries. Um, and we talked about call centers. You know, how does um, UMA handle users that are hired maybe on a, a temporary basis? Great question. So, so with UMA Enterprise, we have a tremendous amount of flexibility, right? To add, we call it adds, moves, and changes. That's kind of a term in the industry. But if a customer needs to add, let's say 10 users or one user or 50 users based on seasonal needs, they just get in touch with UMA directly. That's through their either their project manager or our support team and say, I need to add 10 users, need to add 15 users, and we'll turn those users on for them. We can ship them new phones if they need. They can do that either on a month to month basis if they want. So if it's seasonal, they could turn them off in six months, but we have flexibility to turn on and turn off users and make moves, ads, and changes very quickly. Okay, great. Well, we've got more questions coming in, but let's keep going because sometimes you answer them before we, uh... Have a, or we ask questions before you have a chance to ans answer. So let's let's see what you got. Let's keep going. All right. So talking about, oh, here, this is our next slide. Okay, I didn't know it was the next slide. So this is a, a, a back end look at our carrier class data centers. So getting back to the quality and the reliability and the security piece of our back end solution, right? We have data centers set up in these locations, right? So now it's looking like about nine different data centers, but mostly North America based and a few overseas. I guess the takeaway from this is, one is your calls are routed in a very quick manner because we have the ability to route through multiple data centers. So if you're in the Dallas area, you're in Toronto area, we'll keep that data traffic close to you and that voice traffic close to you so that you'll get a much quicker and better quality of service overall, right? So that's the benefit of having multiple data centers like this. So we've built out all that kind of backend infrastructure and we manage that piece of our backend infrastructure so that we can provide that five nines of reliability, a very high quality and a very high secure and redundant solution for our customers, right? So talking about some of our compliances and things like that in our data centers, so again, some of these terms like ISO, you know, I've heard of those and, and SOC 1, SOC 2, different compliance things for different industries, but also for um, different parts of the voice world that we need to adhere to, right? So see, these are some of them. I don't see GDPR, I think was that acronym in there, but we can offline that to find out how we meet those needs, especially for if it's overseas, right? But again, a lot of different compliance we can meet based on our solution and based on how we've developed our products. Okay. All right. So I'm going to switch a little bit, right? So I talked about UMA Enterprise. I talked about UMA initially, and then I talked a little bit about um, our kind of our support, our both our technical and our customer service support. So I'm going to talk now about hybrid solutions. So. When I say hybrid solutions, one of the areas that UMA has had a lot of success, UMA Enterprise has had a lot of success is we call hybrid solutions. So if a customer comes to us and says, hey, I have some existing infrastructure in an existing phone system, we want to keep the phones, but the, the service, the lines are costing us a lot of money, we want to look to UMA to provide the service, well, we can keep their existing equipment and still provide a cloud solution to allow the call traffic to go over the cloud. So a hybrid solution isn't necessarily one thing. It tends to be a very situational thing based on the customer, but suffice it to say, and the example I use is 
I've worked with a lot of older hotels that have equipment that is five, 10, even 15 years old. If they have that old equipment, sometimes they do want to continue to use those phones or they don't want to learn a whole new world. Well, we can reduce their monthly service cost by incorporating our cloud voice service, right? So kind of a hybrid, we call it a hybrid, but we can use existing with our cloud and merge them together to provide a perfect solution for them. And what we find is it helps minimize the cost because they don't have to buy new hardware and they can save money on the recurring monthly service costs. Okay, and that's what I call a hybrid solution, all right? And I kind of mentioned this in, in just talking about this in the previous slide, but with an on-premise solution, there's typically a, an upfront, a large upfront capital requirement, and there's typically a lot of monthly costs, whether it's maintenance or training or other things with an on-premise solution. UMA Enterprise is focused around what we call hosted VoIP or cloud-based VoIP. And that typically ends up being a lower upfront and a lower recurring cost based on you're not having to buy a bunch of hardware upfront and everything is included in one small fee in your monthly subscription, right? That includes the project manager to do all the training, the moves, ads, and changes, all of that is included. Okay, so again, we typically are saving customers quite a bit of money moving from a premise to a cloud-based solution. And if I keep talking about that a little bit more, I mentioned with a lot of what I've seen with a lot of on-premise uh, older hardware that customers have, they typically are paying monthly and annual maintenance contracts, obviously to keep that equipment running with a hosted solution or cloud-based solution. There are no maintenance contracts. So that's another area that we're seeing a, a time savings. And then sometimes with some of the on-premise solutions, especially the older solutions, I typically see a lot of a la carte prices being charged for long distance or toll free or other things. Whereas most of those things are included in a cloud-based solution from UMA. So no monthly maintenance, no long distance charges, Typically, we have everything included in one small monthly recurring fee for you with UMA and UMA Enterprise. And again, what this translates into ultimately for the customer is what we call this total cost of ownership or TCO tends to be lower. Now, there's a tremendous amount of different statistics out there, but what I typically say is if you move from an on-premise to a cloud-based phone solution, you're typically saving anywhere from 10, 20, up to 40 or 50%. Just depends on the individual circumstance and situation, right? But again, overall, and this is why we're seeing so much growth in this space still as customers are saving money with cloud-based voice solutions, all right? So now I'm gonna change a little bit and move from what we call the hybrid solutions to hospitality specific, all right? Sonia, any more questions or anything pop up? You're doing good? Yeah, there's a couple. So uh, this one is about the SLA. Uh, this is from Takuya N as in November. Uh, Takuya wants to know what the service level agreement is and is it the same for US versus international customers? And I will just, you know, you don't have to, I know service level agreements can be a lot of legal jargon. <laughs> so not necessarily the best for, um, you know, a, a virtual roundtable like this, but is there any kind of uh, tidbit that you'd like to just uh, chime in on, Jeff, when it comes to service level agreements? Yes, I, I think, and you, you nailed it, you hit the nail on the head. What I would say initially is with SLAs or service level agreements, right? I, I will look at that individually, right, based on what the customer needs. But yes, we absolutely have a, a financially guaranteed service level agreement which I'm happy to share with any customer, you know, in a general sense, so that they can at least look at what that is. But again, that does, you know, come into the reliability and quality piece. So yes, we have that. And I, I will be upfront on this one also and say, I don't know the specifics of what it includes, but I am happy to share that legal because it is obviously a contract. So yes. Great. 
And then um, another question from Becca, and I think I misattributed a question, but don't worry, if you ask a question and we use it, I will put your name in the in the uh, hat here. So um, another good one from Becca though, will this presentation be able to be shared with my management team? I'd like to take some of this back to uh, my executives so they can take a look at this. And um, I would say absolutely, you know, reach out to myself uh, or the advisor or, um, you know, agent at Technology Source that, you know, advise you to come to this call today. Um, and we will definitely uh, get that um, over to you right away. Uh, and then another question from John. Uh, actually, there were two questions about uh, your mobile app, one from Becca and one from John. So they'll get, both get entered into the drawing. Um, and the, the question from John is more about getting support on the app. Uh, is it the same support uh, phone number as the, you know, the basic application on the phones? Um, and then I guess Becca was wondering uh, what the reliability rate is when using the app on the mobile phone. Are they the same features on the mobile uh, device? Yeah, so a couple good questions there is yes, support is across the entire, um, I guess, application interface, whether it's mobile, desktop, uh, your, your handset, your physical phone, or any other parts of UMA that all funnels into one group. So that is one support team, right? And we still have that, that project manager available also for you. And then the, the mobile app, um, as far as reliability on the mobile app, yes, as far as the voice, again, keep in mind when you have a mobile app, you're using a mobile device, right? So we can't guarantee your internet quality. It's just based on kind of where you are out and about. But um, for all the other pieces, yeah, absolutely. We have, you know, like I said, a guaranteed SLA in place and we have the backend infrastructure to support redundancy, quality, reliability, security in, in all parts of the product, whether it's the mobile app, desktop app, et cetera. Okay, great. And that's um, John V is in Victor, Becca W is in Whiskey. Your names are in there. We have one from Cal H as in Hotel. I see that you can also manage Wi-Fi. What solutions do you use to handle Wi-Fi security? Great question, Cal. He yeah, so we have partnered, and I'll probably off, offline this one a little bit because it's more of an in-depth kind of conversation, but UMA has come out with a Wi-Fi solution. So this is an UMA branded Wi-Fi solution. Now, yes, we can probably scale it to pretty large customers, but it's mostly for the small and medium business, but it is the, the, the standard access points you'd see in uh, any small to medium-sized business. We'll manage the entire Wi-Fi network for customers. So we'll make it simple that they don't have to hire IT staff to manage their Wi-Fi network. And that includes the security, the quality, the reliability that we build into everything. So we'll do the full manage of that management of that, including the security of those devices. We don't have, let's say, a third party security provider, but if we're working with a partner and they want to bring a third party security solution into the mix, we can absolutely work with them to do that. Great. All right. Well, there's some more, but we'll hold those. <laughs> Let's keep going. Okay. All right. Moving forward. All right. So now I'm going to talk about hospitality, right? And again, I'm going to keep this pretty high level, but uh, we have experts here, both on the sales and the engineering side of our business. So if we need to dig into a specific hospitality solution more, we're absolutely happy to do that. So kind of what's some of the differentiators, right? We've had a lot of success in this space and it gets down to the things I've talked about earlier, right? The ability to customize, the ability to be flexible, right? And I talked about that hybrid, the ability to take existing, what might be older equipment and integrate it with cloud-based voice solutions, right? So those are kind of the, the key areas, but we also have, you know, look, if, if uh, a guest room, you need service for your guest rooms, which most people have, most hotel owners or assisted you know, living facilities, you have phones in the rooms, we have inexpensive user prices or seat prices for those individual phones. They don't typically need a fully featured phone in that space. So we have ways to integrate those existing. We can support all kinds of different, you know, voicemail messages coming through the phones, we have partners we work with, right? So that if you're in your room, you could see either a, a busy lamp that you have voicemails waiting or 
If you have more sophisticated phones in the rooms with messages on the phones, we can support that. So ability to do that. If it's, let's say a golf course, or let's say it's a resort that might have uh, tennis courts, we can incorporate phones out on, let's say the golf course, or maybe in the tennis area, or if you have a separate spa facility with your customers, we can support phones no matter where they are, even if it has to be a kind of an air to air or wireless solution to reach voice service to those phones, we can do that. One of the other areas that we kind of shine in and we have some partnerships with, with providers is the ability to incorporate, we call them property management or hospitality management solutions. So if a customer has an existing property management solution in place, they don't want to make any changes to that, we can incorporate that into our UMA Enterprise product, right? And that's kind of all part of the initial discovery and information sharing we do with customers. And that's all part of the entire selling implementation process, right? We'll make sure we ask all the right questions. We make sure we understand exactly what you have and what you need. And we'll craft a solution, a unique solution based around that, right? And of course, if we need to, we can send people on site to do on-site surveys, on-site installations, whatever you need, we have the ability to provide that kind of customized solution for our customers. Right, and again, I've kind of talked about this already a little bit, but our flexibility, right, and the efficiencies, because we've kind of been doing this for so many years and we've had a lot of success in this space is, it's really kind of focused around the customer, right? I mentioned our 13 step implementation process, right? This is based on our historical you know, knowledge and learning from existing customers, but we will work with you, a dedicated project manager from beginning to end of every implementation, right? So you can be comfortable to know that we did our upfront research to make sure we know what you need. And I said, we've crafted the, the perfect solution. And then we'll take you through that 13 step implementation process to make sure everything is implemented correctly, everybody's trained correctly, all the right equipment is in place, tested, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And for, for the individual user, whether it's a, uh, let's say it could be a hospital, whether it's a hotel, whether it's a restaurant chain, we've developed our solutions to be very simple to use, very easy to use. And whether it's using their existing equipment or whether they're moving everything to the UMA cloud, our solutions are very simple to use. We do provide all the training so that if a customer has any questions about a new feature, right, that's all part of what we do with our solutions. And again, it's typically a, a pretty easy move to go from whether it's existing equipment to a hybrid solution. And it's pretty easy to go from an older, maybe out of date on-premise equipment to a cloud solution. Again, based around the uh, functionality and the ability of what UM has done over the years to craft these kind of unique and flexible solutions, right? And the integration piece, sometimes integration can be complex, uh, sometimes it's simple, but because we've done so many different integrations over the years, we kind of know that space and we know how to work through that with our customers and provide a pretty, pretty painless way to go through that implementation and that integration, okay? Again, these kind of differentiators for us, right? When you're looking at specific business segments like hospitality, we've had a niche in that space and we have a success. So we can really leverage that to help customers in that space. And the kind of the control piece, you know, I just kind of put this out there, but it's all based around what individual hotel or what individual, you know, hospitality business needs. But we typically find based on our, our historical success that we can reduce training, right? Because we've done this so many times and we understand, or we've done the research up front to understand what the customer needs are. The whole system management piece, right? I mentioned, we have a very simple to use backend administration portal that our customers can use, right? If they wanna do it themselves, or they can just rely on us for everything. And as I mentioned, the, the property management solutions integration, right? So we can incorporate existing solutions with our solution to make it a more functional kind of in, entire solution for that 
that business for that customer. All right. So I think at this point, I've kind of run through, what are we? Yeah, we're about 50 minutes in. So I've run through my entire presentation, um, kind of talked about UMA, who we are. I talked about our support a little bit. I've talked about hybrid solutions, creating solutions for both existing and cloud. I've talked about hospitality, and that's kind of the highlights I wanted to, to talk about. Um, what I typically ask people to do is get in touch with me and let's talk more about your individual needs. You know, we had some great questions about international, which obviously I'm not like well-versed in our international offerings, but I absolutely have all the resources at, at my hand. If we need to get somebody else in those conversations, I absolutely can do that. So the last part of my presentation, what I wanted to mention is, and this is for the end customers. So for those end customers that are, that are on the call here on the presentation, if you sign up with UMA, that's our UMA enterprise, right? That's called the, the product name. By the end of October, has to be a minimum of what we call 10 seats or 10 lines. But if you sign up by the end of October, we'll give you one month of free service, right? So if it's a big customer, that could be a lot of money. Even if it's smaller, we'll still save you a little money up front. So it gives you the ability to, like I said, kind of reduce your, your upfront or your first month of, of service free. So that's a promotion we're doing. You'll have to work that through Sonia and through the technology source team, but I'll absolutely offer that to all those customers, right? So that kind of ends my presentation piece, Sonia. If there's more questions, we still have about eight minutes or so. I'm happy to take more questions. Yeah, okay, the next question is from Jeff C, as in Charlie, and wanted to know specifically about um, spread out uh, healthcare practices covering large geographic territories. Is that something that UMA would be um, adept in supporting? Yes, we have customers with, with multiple locations, whether it's regional or national and in the healthcare space. So yes, we have worked with some um, I don't know specifically if they're hospitals or if they're like regional medical centers, but absolutely we have, we have those kind of customers and we can work with those kind of customers. Yes. All right, super. I think then we're, if you're ready, I think we can do our drawing here. I'm ready if you're ready. And if there's All anything right. else that, that comes up, Sonia, if there's any offline or anything else, please get in touch with me and I will do whatever I can to work with you and your customers with their individual questions. All right, sounds like a plan. If you wanna uh, stop sharing your screen, we will, that way they can see. All right. Of course, I always look, it's just like a habit. You wanna see what you're, okay, now I have two that's stuck together. So these will be our two winners. Uh, the first one, you're getting a swag box because you haven't been to a you know, in-person event recently. So that is, Becca W as in whiskey, congratulations and great questions, Becca. Yeah, Becca. And then if this is go. Becca, because she was in there three times. If this is Becca again, we'll draw one more just yeah, to give out. everybody a fair chance. It is. Oh, I had a feeling. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more. Draw she really, one. really won. She gets two swag boxes. Pretty lucky. Okay, go play the lottery, person. Becca. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Rise H as in hotel. Congratulations, Rise. Great right. job. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining today. We will see you in a couple weeks when we are here live again uh, in October. So um, stay warm if it's getting chilly where you're at, like it is where I am. And thank you, Jeff. A pleasure as always. You're one of our very, very uh, prized speakers. You have a lot of great information that we pack in. And um, we always finish on time, which I appreciate. And, and we did have a couple more questions that we didn't get to. Um, but uh, thank you for those of you who did ask. Thanks, David. Um, sorry, we didn't get to your question. Uh, but have a great rest of your day. See everybody again soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.